What's up, Storm fans? I have a special guest with me tonight, Tony Scaponi. How's it going? Not bad at all. Excited to uh, play through this league and talk some Storm. So, Tony, tonight we are playing Black Red, Rakdos, the Epic Gamble. This is your baby. What is different from the last time that the fans might have seen this deck list? Um, so uh, the biggest thing is that we've added black as a primary color. Uh, you know, a, a few omissions that are certainly big as well. You don't see Bergy, no soul lands, uh, a few things. Those are two that actually, when you sent me the deck list, I was pretty shocked by. I know of your love of Bergy. I think everyone mm. that plays Legacy knows how much you love Bergy. <laughs> I was blown away that it wasn't included. Do you mind explaining that a little bit? Um... Well, I've tested a lot of stuff with this shell, trying to spl uh, splash colors. I've certainly tried to splash black a number of times before and never really loved it because uh, I was always trying to play Bergy and actually most of the time Jessica's Will, these three drops that really require soul land. So I was also trying to jam in soul land. So now you got black, red, and you can you should consider colorless as a primary color as well. Um, couple that with the blue that you need, and it was just, I I had to jump through a ton of hoops to play Bergy, and most of the time I was just imprinting it to rather just cast Relay instead, instead of, Bergy can be a risky line as well, with Lightning Bolt and Swords and whatever removal you run into. And I know more, as much as anyone, I guess, how powerful Galvanic Relay is, so mm. it does make up for the little bit of a loss from the backside of Bergy, which would be Hornfell, Horn of Bounty, I believe it's called. Uh, yeah, Hornfell. Okay, I was close. Yeah, give close. me a little, give me a little bit of credit, Tony. Uh, <laughs> so, I, I guess I have some questions for you. So, when I looked at this deck list, and my first thought is, wow, Tony, six lands. That's not accurate because we have <laughs> these five flip lands down here. Shatter Skull Smashing doubles as a removal spell for cards like Thalia, so it's a land that gives you a little bit of versatility. But why Agadim's Awakening? Uh, for the same reason that we play Shatter Skull Smashing, primarily because it can imprint underneath Chrome Mox, which obviously is very important for our openers, but for a deck that uh, literally all it does is it looks at multiple openers uh, every single game. We're going to be echoing two, three, four, five times a game, uh, in which case you need to get a high level of efficacy out of your Chrome Mox. That's fair, and I completely understand that. So that makes quite a bit of sense to me. Um, so we only have two fetch lands. Admittedly, this does seem a little bit off to me. Do you mind walking me through that? Yeah, sure. Um, so, and these numbers might not be perfect in terms of total number of uh, the bolt lands and total number of the other lands right it might be maybe we should be playing two agademes and a total of you know five lands instead of six i'm not quite sure i've been tinkering with it um but this to me at least seems like the the amount of these bolt lands we can get away with without taking too much uh away from the colors that fashion dual lands give us and vice versa right and when you're exiling cards often with relay um you can't do something like, say we played, what, we have four or five, six lands, right? You can't play like four fetch lands and two dual lands because if you go relay and you exile even one of them, well, then you've greatly hindered, you know, that's a whole land drop just out of your deck entirely. Um, so I, I wish I could play more than two fetch lands, uh, but what it does do, if you just look at it, strictly speaking, is it gives us three blue sources that are lands, right? We have Valk and two fetches. Mm -hmm. The two fetches are also blue, uh, red and black. It's, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how else to put it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm following what you're putting down. And then we have some uh, Epic Storm technology here with Mox Opal, Chrome Mox, and a card that a lot of the Epic Storm players formerly loved. I still love it, Defense Grid. Uh, four mm -hmm. Grid makes perfect sense when you're spinning the wheel with Echo of Aeons. You know, it stops the asymmetrical part of Echo of Aeons. But Tony, before we recorded this league, I talked about my hesitance with Thoughtseize with Echo. You said it's mostly for Relay, and your explanation made a decent amount of sense to me, even though I still might disagree a little bit. But why don't you tell the fans what you told me? Mm -hmm. Um, 
yeah, so it's really good with Relay. Uh, oftentimes, uh, one of the weaknesses of Relay is what if you Relay for 8 or 9 or whatever, and then you pass the turn, of course, and your opponent puts down a hate piece, and then you look at your 8 or 9 cards, and you can only cast one of them because a, a canonist or whatever it is is in play. Uh, Thoughtseize can allow us to Relay... Uh, into Thoughtseize, right? Or Thoughtseize into Relay, rather. So that uh, I think the point that you were initially making, which is quite valid, is that with Echo specifically, it can be bad, right? You're taking cards out of their hand, but then you're drawing them seven again anyways. Um, but post-Echo, if we have a Thoughtseize in hand and then we Relay, it becomes very good because we can pluck that one card that is problematic uh, so that our Relay can go through uh, the next turn. That's fair, and I do follow that. It makes a decent amount of sense to me. I do wish that there was another black silence effect. Not that they'll ever print that, but that's the sort of effect that this deck would want, in my opinion. Um, yeah. So the numbers on Gamble make sense to me because you have three in the main deck to naturally draw. You have one to get with Burning Wish. How did you arrive at three copies of Entomb is the correct number? Um, It's a very linear card, and as you start echoing, you it's surprising how often I wind up with no echoes left. Um, and then Entomb isn't actually uh, a card. So it's, I don't know, I we might wind up with, with four. M maybe we should go down to Morphos, maybe. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. But they don't do anything more in multiples, right? Like, I want to increase my density of that effect, that being Entomb and Gamble. Uh, they both have a couple of different uses as well, pros and cons. Um, I pause you for but, a quick second. In my experience, Gamble is just Red and Doom. Just throwing it out there. Um, no, I mean, <laughs> a lot of times it's not. <laughs> no, I'm saying that's just my luck. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 just no matter what. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So, <laughs> admittedly, if I were to play this deck, Tony, there would be one thing I would do different. I really think this deck wants a Faithless Looting. I, you mentioned running out of Echoes and then Entomb being dead, mm. which is one of my concerns. Adding a looting to your deck does turn on Gamble and Echo or Entomb. It's just like, hey, you could put looting to the graveyard if you need to. It gives you that little bit in case you do get an Echo stuck into your hand. It's still very good off Relay. Or, yeah, it's good off Relay. Plays into Relay well. It's a card that I think you should probably make room for is just as a one of. Um, but that's something I would do differently. Yeah. I will say, uh, the way this is the first time I've run into a black red version that I have felt comfortable with the shell and think it is actually competitive. And when I push general theory, and especially when I hit a theory that I feel like is actually working, I try not to do too many one ofs because then it makes it more difficult for me to come to concise conclusions for my theory, right? So I've gone through a ton of the flashback cards, and I will say, the two that have stuck out as possible contenders would be looting and ignite uh, ignite the future the one with the big flashback cost mm -hmm. for when we don't have access to blue and we still want to keep going or of course when we run out of echoes which it happens those both seem very reasonable to me uh yeah. admittedly i'm a little bit low on morphos in this list you told me that it's needed to keep control of your colors you know during all mm -hmm. of that wheeling I understand where you're coming from. I really do. I'm just not as high on mana Morphos in this deck list when you have Mox Opal, Lotus Petal, Lion's Eye Diamond to fix some of that mana. I think in time, you might see mana Morphos be skimmed out of the deck. Uh, that's just a hunch that I have. It's possible. It's uh, It has a lot of things going for it. It works really well with Relay, both the front and back side. Mm -hmm. Yes, it fixes our mana and exactly how we want it to as well. Usually we want... Usually we only need two colors, but we need the right two. Um, oftentimes we're starting a sequence with Rite of Flame and then into Manamorphos gives us that. Say we have a Dark Ritual and Entomb, we can make blue and black, and then we can Ritual, Entomb for Echo, and cast the Echo. Uh, nobody really, not nobody, but it's very uh, rare that somebody counters a Manamorphos. So when we're running these main deck relays, you can get away with you know, land drop, chrome mox, cycle a couple of mana morphos, and then you play a pedal, and all of a sudden you have a, a big relay and you still have cards in your hand. I definitely love relaying, so you don't need to sell me on it. I'm all in. 
<laughs> all right so i think i've covered the main deck if there's anything else that you'd like to cover before we head over to the sideboard i guess just the wish the actual wish so it's i mean it, it's probably pretty obvious to most people it's just to increase uh the density of you know our actual win con because admittedly the deck does have overall less action than previous iterations of the deck uh that is one of the weaknesses is that uh it can fizzle. It is faster and more consistent in casting Echo of Aeons and accumulating mana uh, and casting it again, but uh, can certainly can, can fizzle. So a fifth wish is, uh, is very helpful. It also gives you a little bit of a backdoor if your opponents are crazy people that are running something like main deck meddling mage or anything mm. like that, you can still win the game. So wish gives you a little bit of flexibility there. What it doesn't do though, and I know this from playing other formats, doesn't get the cyborg Echo of Aeons in the way that you want it to. It doesn't actually put right. the card to your hand, so you cannot flash back an Echo from your cyborg. Womp womp. But it does work well, well with things like Gamble, Galvanic Relay, Reforge, etc. Yeah, it is It is generally worse than, than Burning Wish, for sure. But having the fifth one is, is great. I mean, you mentioned one of the reasons why, but another two of the reasons is Chalice of the Void on two. Doesn't make it uh, to be lights out, uh, as well as getting a burning wish surgical. Yeah, for sure. All right. So thought sees, you know, it makes a lot of sense as a wish target gives you some protection. I get it, but these feed the swarms. Those are a little yeah. bit odd to me. Uh, so if I had to guess, don't, t don't say the answer yet. It's not really for Leland and sanctity because most people don't play that. If I had to guess this card is primarily not that it can't answer Leland and sanctity it certainly can. But I'd be willing to guess that Feed the Swarm is mostly for Leyline of the Void. And then yep. maybe after that, Deafening Silence? How, yep. how warm am I? Yeah, the, I mean, those are definitely the two primary. You certainly got the primary. Okay. Is there any other situation we should be aware of? Well, it kills creatures. Gasp. Uh, like that <laughs> Dirty Thalia card? Mm-hmm. All right, so Chicken Tendies, everybody knows about our beloved Tendrils of Agony. Peer into the Abyss. Tony, we both love this card. I know that we do. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This card's amazing. Uh, it's the mm -hmm. closest you can get to uh, a deterministic kill with the Epic Storm, in my opinion. I've cast this sure. card in like 300 matches now. Or, not that I came out wrong. Like 3,000 games is probably more accurate. And I've only lost two of them. And one of them was my own fault. So the card's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um gamble we talked about that you can get it with burning wish you know keep the chain going either getting diamond or echo uh shattering spree you're up to two of these now why this change um well since our main removal piece is feed the swarm it uh glaringly does not target artifacts uh, in addition to that eight thought the blue artifact deck that has eight forces eight uh thought casts and thought monitors and it's only real piece of disruption i mean anyone can put whatever they want in the deck but at least bob wong's version what people have been generally running uh is chalice of the void and it's just a great card against them overall they have a lot of artifacts so so one thing that makes me a little bit sad when you're when you're including things like dark ritual chrome Mox with actual black cards to imprint you're probably casting tendrils a little bit more often, which means that our beloved grape shot is probably being cast, you know, not quite as often. Tony, do you track how often you're casting each of these? Uh, I have not played this version enough to, even if I did come to any concrete conclusions. So I guess that's, that's a no. It, it could possibly in the future be removed, I suppose. It would take a lot. For that to happen i mean this gives you backup for veil of summer so i probably wouldn't cut it i'm just curious if you're closer to 50 50 now than previous builds where you're probably like 80 20 that was all um you have Anna relay amazing card how often are you casting empty the warrens nowadays uh a fair amount it's certainly not something that i would want to cut i've gone up to two sometimes even three because it's really the only thing that helps us against delver i otherwise if i'm on one empty i literally don't bring anything in against delver okay and then we have reforge of the soul another draw spell only requires red mana um yeah the card's just great yep so i have a question for you 
the last time I had you here, we were boarding in a wing condition a lot to dodge things like surgical. Mm-hmm. Is that still the case with Wish? And no. it Okay. I was going to ask, how often are you boarding in one empty? Uh, against Delver and some blue soup decks. Okay. That's all I have for the intro, Tony. Is there anything else that you would like to say? Uh, there's nothing I can think of, no. Okay. Well, Tony, I don't know if you know this, but if our fans wanted to support us, they should like, comment, and subscribe on this video. That's a great way of doing it. Help support the Epic Storm. But also, go check out Tony's YouTube page. Tony, is yours, your, is your handle just Tony Scaponi? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, if you enjoyed this video, definitely go follow Tony. Uh, maybe, uh, Tony, I'll put your links in the description. Make it easy on everyone. So just open up that description down below. Go follow Tony. Definitely go do that. Um, or subscribe to Tony. This is YouTube after all. All right, and then if you're looking to support us in any other manner, click that join button next to the subscribe button. On the 15th, that's four days away from today, I'm giving away two of the original mini token pack completely free to the people that are members of this channel. So if you're a member, you have pretty good odds. As of today, we have 52 members. Go sign up. It's a great thing to do. And if you want to support us in any other manner, you can be like Tony. Head over to theepicterm.com slash donation decks, and you can... Sign up for the Epic tier to be here on this channel. We also have a base tier and a super tier with tons of other sweet perks. Go check that out. We also have the epicstorm.com slash shop for card singles and sweet, sweet store merchandise, including the Storm 20 baseball tee and the Epic Storm pint glass and our current mini token pack to help you keep track of your mana and storm. Black and red mana available for playing the Epic Gamble. All right, Tony, that's all I have. Let's head over to round number one. Tony, what do you think a record will be at the end of this video? 5-0? Yeah, of course. All right. That's what that's what I'm aiming for here. I expect a 5-0 out of the Epic Gamble. All right. Let's see if we can make it happen. Let's do it. Match number one with Tony Scaponi, the Epic Gamble. Tony, I am ready to crush. We're on the play. Here we have Gamble, Double Gamble, Lion's Eye Diamond. Is this a, like... I don't know if this is, I imagine that this is a keep, but are you just like, hell yeah, turn one echo? Like, do you jam because you can't cast this dark ritual into the grid? Like, this hand is essentially a free mulligan as long as our opponent's not on a blue deck. On average, the deck can do better. Question is, do we want, do we want to try it for six? You could also gamble for, like, you could play the LED out, and you could gamble for um like a black source to be able to ritual into this next turn grid yeah next turn for protection i don't hate that yeah that's probably the safer play all right so let's do that then uh if i was to do it i'd probably get lotus petal because it doesn't cost you your land drop next turn how do you feel about that um it's ritual. No, I think I'd rather just have a consistent mana source. Really? Okay. Or maybe even just Chromox then if it hits. Well, Chromox no, doesn't. Because then we're not guaranteed, right? Yeah. Well, that's why I wanted to do Petal because you could Petal Ritual Grid and still have your land drop. Yeah, um, you know what? Because it, it makes Opal a good draw too, potentially. All right, let's go for Petal. I told you it's in tune for me. Yeah, I guess that's the problem. You're casting it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to pass here. You know what? To be honest, this was just a bad line, because if Gamble got hit, then we can't echo. Ooh, that's a good point. I did not consider that. Mm. A little rusty to start, but... Watery Grave. Okay, not Wasteland. I'm a fan of that. And also, we might be facing Shadow here. Black Source? How do you feel about just passing? They didn't um, wasteland us, so they probably don't have it. What the heck do they have? Um. So if we were to make the same play, where does that put us? Well, no, because then we can hit Burning Wish. Okay, yeah. yeah, that's, I mean, I think that's what we do here. Okay, now it's our opponent's turn. I'm a little bit worried about, like, Hymnotorok, if I'm being honest. 
Two. That hurt. Yeah, they drew it. Okay. I would imagine they're passing. Yeah. Yeah. They probably have the exact same hand as before. We just pass. Yeah. So it's worth noting that if we can draw a few mana sources, relay tends to be pretty good against blue decks. Uh, yep. That said, if we draw running mana sources, we could probably just like defense grid into something really powerful. I'm not sure. And our opponent's just passing. Manamorphos, that doesn't do us any good here. Pass. This is definitely a shadow variant. It's strange that they haven't done anything in four turns. Thought seizing coming, so they're going to fall down to 13 life. And Tony, if you had to guess, what do they take from this hand? Uh, probably grid or relay? Maybe the... There you go. Grid was the answer. Mm. All right, let's draw a fetch land. All right, they're going to 12. Interesting that they got steam vents. Shadows on the board. Technically a black source. Um, I think we play it tapped. Yep. I would not like to lightning bolt myself. Thank <laughs> you. So we can cast Dark Ritual now, but uh, with the grid being gone, it's not as important. So we're looking to spike another red source off the top. All right, the opponent has six cards in hand. They're at 10 life. I predict we're going to win this game, actually, with Grape Shot. I hope so. Thought sees again, so we're gonna, they're going to fall to eight, but it makes the Shadow a 5-5. Five, five. Pretty good combo. And the Gamble. Honestly, I don't agree with that pick. Ah, uh, second Wasteland. That's tough. We draw a red source. Oh, how many cards do they have? Four cards? They probably have a daze. That's what I was thinking. And there's Wasteland, destroyed the Agademes. Draw. Thoughtseize. We just have to pass here. Volcanic. Okay. We're falling to 10 life. Getting a little dangerous now. Draw. Our old friend. All right, so we have one more draw step after this turn, most likely. Okay, going to five. I have five cards in hand. And... Diamond. That was rough. We just n didn't really hit initial mana sources. Nope. Okay, not the way we wanted to start this league, but that's okay. Tony, how do we approach the Dutch Shadow matchup? Um, honestly, I don't think we're really going to do much, if anything. Is Empty the Warrens a card we're interested in? Because if I was playing on my own, I'd probably think about boarding in one. That's the only thing I would consider. The obvious issue would be uh, Plague Engineer if they were to have it. But a turn one Empty would be, would be pretty good. Do we want to dilute to play it, though, is the question. What would your gut say that you board out here? If we were to bring in the empty? Correct. On the play, probably just a Metamorphose or an Opal. I like Opal because it's an initial mana source that can't be destroyed by Wasteland. Sure. Um, I'd probably board out a Morphos if you're okay with this. Sure. All right, we're going to crush this game. I can feel it in my bones. Yep. On the play for game number two. This is a relay. I'm in. Are you in? Oh, yeah. All right. So how I would sequence this is Petal, Chromox, then Opal. And then probably Rite of Flame. I would actually sequence it by playing Chromox into Rite of Flame. So I think they're more likely to counter the Rite of Flame if it's the last card that you cast before okay. Relay. Whereas I don't think they're going to counter a Rite of Flame right up front. And if they do, we still have uh, gas for our Relay. 
I would imprint Gamble because I want the Burning Wish to be a backup action spell. That said, if you imprint the Burning Wish, you can later on gamble before you relay for extra storm, but I'm not really into that if I'm being honest. What would you do? Um, I'd probably imprint the Burning Wish. Okay. Just because gamble costs less mana and we're going to be hellbent the way that we want to. All right, so let's cast Rite of Flame. Lotus Petal. All right, Opal. So now, do you just gamble for another relay? Or do you just tap the Opal? I would just tap the Opal and, and relay. Okay. All right, five fresh ones coming off the top rope. Galvanic relay so strong. We're hoping for LEDs and... Uh, grids. Wish. Wish. Thoughtseize. Land. Relay. A little bit clunky, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, that said, we can gamble for Lion's Eye Diamond. So what we can do is we can gamble... Oh, no, we can gamble for... Hmm. So there are things we can do. It's just not... Ugh, I we wish we get some fast mana here. We could gamble for Diamond. Not that I'm saying that we need to. But that gives us a 50-50 shot, and then we could wish for Echo. Hmm. Um, well, I'd yeah. probably do it the other way around. I'd probably Burning Wish for Echo and then gamble. Oh, because it gives you an extra look. Pull an extra card in your hand. Well, that was pr uh, pretty good. So let's, Definitely. let's Lightning Bolt ourselves. Yay. Um, I would Ritual. Dark Ritual, right? Okay. And then so, point the thought sees. Three, six, yeah. This might even just be another uh, relay turn. Mm -hmm. All right, so they're on stifle, not garbage. Uh, I think we just take the force here. We can beat a thought sees in the long run. Uh, yeah. Okay. So now we have to make a meaningful decision because we have all these red cards. We could just go get Echo and then discard the Echo here and then flash it back with these all in exile. I don't hate that. Um, but yeah, we... but it's really risky. Correct. It's a, it's a, well, it's, it's a two out of three chance, right? So another thing we could do is just go put Echo in the graveyard and then relay for four. Um, not that it's oh, an amazing play, but it's just something we could do. Um, or wait, what was the first play that you were suggesting? Because we can just gamble into Echo here. Correct, that's what I said. Okay, I thought we were thinking of Burning Wish and then no. put Echo in our hand and then gamble for LED, which is the risky play that I was saying. No, You're saying it's risky because drawing them seven cards when we know they currently don't really have anything yeah so we would burn a red mana here and we'd have one red uh, open and we've made a land drop that said we'd have three action spells right here and mana off the top means a huge relay which i think i'm in for i think i would burning wish and grab something and then relay it burn our petal okay so what are we going to get with the burning wish then probably echo Okay. Because um, then they take our. Well, then they take our gamble. Yeah. All right. So, Burning Wish. All right. Now, let's go get Echo Veons and cast Relay. All right. Four coming off the top. This wish is not one of the four, and this wish will be exiled. Morphos. Herod Mesa. Right of Flame isn't bad. And then a second land, unfortunately. Oh. We're definitely rolling pretty low on these relays. Okay, so they've picked up a watery grave. We know these four. We gave them a lotus petal. I would have liked that. To return our metal craft. Yeah. I imagine, yeah, just I imagine we're going to pull the LED off the top. I imagine we're going to be hit by Thoughtseize here. 
and then they're going to play probably both copies of Shadow. It's like sort of free for them. And the Shadow means, or uh, the Phyrexian Dreadnought means that they're likely a Stifle build. They just passed without casting a Shadow. They could have drawn Force Negation. Um, so let's play Badlands. It's sort of free to do here. And then Rite of Flame off of the Chrome Mox, and then we can Mana Morphose. And with the Morphos, probably add blue blue in case we spike another ritual effect to hard cast this echo. Yep. Alright. Blue blue. That's a pretty good Dang. one. Alright. Um, so let's play this. We're gonna want to float mana off the opal. We float a uh I don't know if it actually matters that much, but no. Until we crack the LED and make our decisions there. I just crack it for black. Okay. Because we're going to have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're going to have six. So we'll probably just want two, two, and. It's fine. What did you draw, opponent? All right. So we're at 13. This would have been a lot scarier if they had played the Shadows last turn. So this is actually a pretty good spot, in my opinion. So we can oh, yeah. double storm spell, um, and then on top of that we have gamble back up. Yep, where we can just gamble probably for another echo when we're hellbent to guarantee actually casting it. So do I want to play out Chromox before I empty here, or do we want this in hand for the gamble? Um. So how much do we have total? We have six, seven, eight nine they would give us 10 so post empty and relay will have three so we can't actually gamble and cast echo but we can hmm i would probably just imprint the gamble okay. and then just leave our echo in our hand and if all else fails we can hard cast that next turn plus if they go to thought sees us it'll go right where we want it yeah i'm done for that Right, Chrome Mox. Like I said, they're probably a Stifle build. Uh, we have to mm. keep that in our mind. Would so you rather... Well, I'm, here's my thought. I would almost rather have Relay get Stifled than the Empty. Mm. It would be really difficult to lose off of this Relay that will probably be for... If it gets Stifled, that's 8, 9. It'll be for 10. We already have like six mana sources in play we're gonna win off of the relay whereas empty they could actually answer it so i would actually empty first okay we've had some bad luck with our relay so far so i'm a little hesitant but i'll trust your judgment well we'll hit the other side of the coin right all right empty on the stack they're digging for that stifle. Ooh. I mean, for what it's worth, I think both are defensible. All right. And empty. Does it resolve? Oh, hey. the empty trigger resolved. I like it. Okay. So you're allowed to F6 through these, and then because you have mana floating, it will stop. I'm not doing that. I get nervous doing it sometimes, so <laughs> I'm aware that you can. I'm just not doing it. Mm -hmm. All right. And then we have our relay for 10. It's worth noting if you are playing Bergy and the only mana floating is Bergy mana, it will pass through your turn. I did know that. I believe I picked that up from one of your videos, to be honest, or one mm -hmm. of your leagues. I've done it before. Super sad. All right. So it's goblins versus monkey pirates. Cool win. I mean, monkey pirates are pretty cool, but that's a lot of goblins. Yeah, for sure. All right, All it looks right. like goblins are the better tribe. Get out of here, monkey pirates. Got them. We're going into game three. We know our opponent's a stifle version. Do we want to make any changes? Mm -hmm. Um, like Thoughtseize isn't quite as good on the draw, but I still think this is. Probably the best 60 we're going to put out there. Okay, let's uh, submit it then. 
I'm in. Turn one Do empty it. with Thoughtsy's backup? Hell yeah. This probably makes you feel like you're playing the old Epic Storm. This is an old TES hand. <laughs> <laughs> 2018 TES. The, that's what this is. Is this a monkey? It is a monkey. And it's worth noting that they did not get a land they can daze with. Yeah. All right. So I think we just lead off on Ritual uh, because it can't be dazed, which is the big thing. And if it gets forced, we know not to play anything else. Sure. So let's go get that Badlands. Ooh. All right. Oh, yeah. Thought season. We drew another artifact for the storm count. Perfect. Wow. All right. So they have a brainstorm. I think brainstorm is the most dangerous card in this hand. Two. Because like the channeler is not going to get large enough in time. Dreadnought. They would need a stifle and a blue mana. We're gonna have blockers for the ragavan. Needle does nothing. It's definitely yeah. brainstorm. Yep. All right, so let's imprint this Burning Wish. Yep. Bring back fond memories right now. Cast <laughs> Rite of Flame. And then empty the Warrens. Woot Boom. woot. 12 Gabos. Take that. Stifle, Shadow, Knot, Pile. And they felt safe being up a game. Mwahaha. All right. What are you playing? So they played Channeler. Did you hit a land? And then they conceded. They just wanted two red cards in play, too. I get it. You always want red 1-1s one in play. I understand. But, Tony, that was match number one. Any thoughts after this match? Uh, well, let's win again. And uh -huh. again and again. All right, we, we've gotten the first one. Four left to go. We'll see you in match number two. Match number two. Tony, I've played this opponent a bunch a couple of years ago. They were always on Doomsday. That said, the last time I faced them, they were actually on blue-black Omnitel. Similar archetype in the fact that it's a blue forcible-based combo deck. How do you feel about this like defense grid heavy hand with an Entomb? Mm. It's slow, but in a lot of the draws that either of those decks have, this can be very powerful. Like, if they go show and tell pass, we probably kill them. Not if they do it turn one, most likely, but I, I'm inclined to keep this. Okay. It doesn't feel great just because it's so slow and such a fast deck, but... I would keep this hand. Is, yeah. I'd love to peel a right of flame off the top. Just like jam a turn one grid. Mm. So scalding turn. There's the underground sea. Are we dead? Personal tutor, that's not good. For Doomsday. They're on four cards now. Draw. Relay. All right, so we're put in a tough spot here because we could burn the pedal to put grid into play, but that doesn't disrupt our opponent and it gets rid of our black source for the entomb. So I think what I would actually do here we're, is I would just that's play okay though because we have morphos for next turn, but okay. Uh, what I would probably do here is play volcanic and pretend to be something else. Uh, that said, my username is Brian Cook. They might not fall for that. You could play the Shatter Skull <laughs> Smashing in a play tapped, but like that doesn't matter against Doomsday. The life total, just like, why give your opponent that information? So, I don't know if I have strong opinions on this. What would you do, Tony? I might actually just cycle the Metamorphose. The problem is then we can only make two Colors, and what are we really looking for? Make black, red. This is all on the assumption that we're not dead next turn, that they're casting Doomsday and passing. Which might not be true with a pedal in play. I think cycler. I like just jamming Turmung Red off a of pedal and then using Morphos next pedal turn for on the black. Land. 
Yeah, sure. All right, so pedal and then grid. We're basically just hoping to hit LED in one of the next two draws. All right, so they have three mana for Doomsday. The question is, do they have Dark Ritual plus draw spell? Looks like the answer is no. That said, with three cards in hand, Cycler, Cycler kills yeah. you here? Or if it's um, just like they have a draw spell in hand, they could do Cycler into Lotus Petal kill you. Those are both options. I've actually played uh, quite a bit of Doomsday recently uh, at Locals. That is very strong. Oh, yeah. I, had I think a, it's... I had a turn one with Forcible Backup, and I just felt so dirty. It was like... I got to force their spell that was trying to interact with me and kill them the same turn. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, it's essentially what we're trying to do a lot of the times, too. Protection plus kill you, turn one. The Epic Storm can just... Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. We, we've slowed down a hair. Yep. All the more brutal when you do have a turn one. All right, so they've selected their cards for their pile. Oracle's not in that pile, so they must be playing two oracles. There's three forces here. Hmm. So an echo also will not kill them, by the way. Um, just want to point that out. They have more than seven cards. Yep. Pro Mox. Okay, so let's play the land. I feel like that's kind of free here. Yep. All right, and then play Pro Mox and print Relay. Sure. And then no reason not to, really. Mana Morphos, pray to hit mana. So I think we're going to add Black Red. Uh, yep. Or... Dark uh, Ritual or LED works here. Gamble. That gives us a shot. So, so do we want to entomb for Echo first, or do we gamble first for Lion's Eye Diamond? Because we don't actually want to discard the entomb. So I think we, entomb. we have a 50-50 yeah. shot if we just... Um, yeah, you got to entomb first and then go for our 50-50. All right, so we grab the Echo... All right, we, we need Gamble to not be in Tomb here. We will select Lion's Eye Diamond. Hey! hey, hey. All right. Hey, so, and we have Grid in play. Now we Echo, but we have to get a win here. We cannot pass the turn. Echo. They're at nine. So we Wait. get another um, Echo, I believe, here. Um... Hold on. So yeah, ritual. Uh, but then we can't use the right of flame. Well, what you could do, and I realize that we're risking it again, is we gamble for diamond. Yep, yeah, but you're gonna want to ritual and tomb before that. Yeah, I'm aware. Yeah. Okay. Um, Just wanted to make sure you didn't. So do the question is do we not cast Rite of Flame? Like I'm just asking questions out loud here. So we're gonna put Echo right. to the graveyard again. Because if you keep the Rite of Flame in hand, your odds of discarding the Lion's Eye Diamond go down. That said, it's a 33% chance that you hit the diamond. If you keep the Rite of Flame, it's a 25% chance. So you're increasing your odds by seven percent, but you're losing an extra mana in our deck. Uh and then Are you, you won't feeling have any... lucky. I'm feeling lucky. But also, we won't have any red mana floating going into the next wheel. Right. So, I think, yeah, I think it's smarter to play the right of flame. Especially for, for a 7% difference. Right, for the reasons that you said, yeah. Hey. Hey All right. <laughs> so now we flash back Echo again. Putting Grixis. Ooh. <laughs> So the problem is, I think we're just dead here. Um, yeah. <laughs> we do have the More mythical kind, uh, 11 mana off right, but it's just not good enough. We can't target players with this, so that's unfortunate. 
Uh, it is creatures or planeswalkers. Even if you pay a bajillion mana into it, it does not change. Um, yeah. I mean, I would just just do it, right? Is there any combination of? No, there's no way. Unless they just somehow screw up, like All right. draw a card when we're, they have zero cards. We are exiling the top 19 cards of our library. We have showed our opponent our, half of our deck at this point. <laughs> uh, but now we're going to die to that Oracle. Brian, you could have you could have gotten 20. Could have cast the Shatter Skull. That's true. Um, can you? Ca- it says up to. So yes, you can cast it. Mm-hmm. What are the odds that the bottom two are draw spell oracle? I'm feeling lucky. I can't imagine that they would have built a pile that uh you know works that way. So I did notice that there is no oracle in there's an oracle in their exile, so there's a like this small chance that our opponent built a pile without oracle. Because I've definitely done it before, but our opponent's supposed to be a doomsday expert. I doubt that they would do that. What if they have ideas inbound as their only draw card? Possible. There's usually a cycler. They have one card in deck. There's the cavern. Named wizard. So their bottom card has to be oracle and there can't be any draw spell. Or cycler. Think they got a phone call or something? <laughs> Possible. Or hoping that we can seed out of boredom when they exile their oracle. <laughs> Alright, they've played a Lion's Eye Diamond. Lotus Petal. Storm Chew. They were probably just looking at her cards. Tap for wizard mana. Sacrifice Edge Autumn. And there's their other oracle. Okay. So Doomsday gets game number one. Do you use Cyborg at all? My initial impression would be no, you just resubmit. I think I want the well. I don't know. You have more experience with the sideboard thought sees than I do. Do you generally bring it in as more disruptions against a combo deck as such? I don't hate it. Um, yeah, it's probably pretty wise considering uh, how effective Doomsday is at beating up other combo decks. Because it's fast, because you have to respect Days, Thought Seas, Force of Will. Uh, and then they can also kill you very quickly. So they get to play this game of like, you have to respect my cards, I don't have to respect yours, and I'm very fast. So Doomsday is a very good deck. Yeah. Having said that, a lot of times if I have a blazing fast opener without protection, I'll just go for it because they can't always keep. They can't always have it all. Sometimes they just do. But sometimes they have to keep a hand that just has a fast win and no protection or vice versa. So and you just got to go for it. The most common Doomsday lists, they play four Force of Will in the main deck and four Force of Negation in the board. So they're upwards of around 75% to have a Force in their opening hand. Uh, mm. I don't love those odds personally, so I don't know if I'd be looking to just jam... But I do love just turn one relay for four against Doomsday. I would keep this. Oh, yes. All right, and our opponent took a mulligan. Leyline of the Void. Okay, well, we have the relay hand, so hopefully we can leverage that. Lion's Eye Diamond. Lotus Petal. Mox Opal. that resolves now we cast relay so we have four cards coming off the top next turn i am looking well we can't cast relay that way i am looking to <laughs> cast this defense grid plus something else all right so relay for four lotus petal is not in our relay double thought sees land <laughs> that's weird the way that it resolved uh grid yep. is revealed before the relay uh, but that makes sense because it would go to the graveyard. So next turn, I'm guessing we want to... It's actually a little awkward because if you 
want to play the cyber not that we're going to play the grid in exile but if you wanted to you couldn't um play grid first for metal craft or thoughtsies first draw. and tomb not very Ooh. good with the ley line uh i think no. we should play this land and go get the third badlands out of the deck so that way we you know leverage it a little bit better and i think we just double thoughtsies this turn sure all right thoughtsies number one and with these thought seizes, okay, you have flustered. Uh, they might daze this second one, but I'd be looking to stop them from winning because we have protection with uh, the defense grid next turn. We just need to buy time. Yep. Thought seize number two. Am I getting dazed? So there's a couple of draws that I'd like, but in the back of my head, I'm thinking that the way that we win this game probably Ooh, force pitch brainstorm. I'm okay with that. Oh, wow. uh, I'm thinking that we probably want to try to just peer and ignore the graveyard altogether. Yeah. Cycle Street Wraith. They're at 16 now. They hit land number two and they're passing. Draw. We're going to go. Ooh, that was good. Uh, so now we can play defense grid and then just play out the diamond to avoid. Uh, something like a thought season now we're just looking to rip either wish or burning wish off the top of the deck to cast this peer into the abyss question is do we want to entomb to increase our odds we'd have to do it in our upkeep oh, i don't right. know um we wouldn't it would take wish as an out so i wouldn't unless we drew another mana source then maybe so I guess if we were going to do it, we should have just done a main phase, but... That's not a good yeah. sign for us. We need to rip here. Yep. We need to rip, and because of the ley line, definitely have uh, fewer outs. Gamble gives us a 50-50 to win. That's a good point. I wasn't considering Gamble as an out. So that puts us up to eight outs that I can think of. Manamorphose is a redraw. I don't think I've ever had Leyline across the table against Doomsday. It's become pretty common over the last month or so. Uh, Max Carini, a.k.a. Wonder Pro, has been championing it. Uh, did yeah. sort of well in a few challenges with it. So, like, two fairly common, sometimes three. Okay. All right. Doomsday has exiled the rest of their library. One days. I was actually wondering if they actually had days in their deck, and it looks like they do. Uh, just I didn't check game one, and they didn't have it this game, so I was just curious. And now we need to hit. Come on! Oh, oh hell yeah! <laughs> Never told me the odds. Gas burning wish. Hold priority. Put this mother effing peer on the stack. Yes, I would like to get a card with Burning Wish. Thank you. And Tony, we are going straight into the abyss. How do you feel about that? Directly into it. Fantastic. All right. Mox Opal, Legend Rule, Diamond. They're forever. You definitely want those. Pearl Mox, Imprint this Gamble. These Rite of Flames will be less effective with the Ley Line in play. Doesn't matter. We have it all. Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual. Burning Wish. And uh, I feel like Grape Shotting. So that's what I'm going to cast here. Because I love some Grape Shots. Mm -mm -mm. Hasty. And click, click, click. Boom. F6. Now you just need to get game number three on the draw against Doomsday. Gonna no be problem. It. So they had Fluster Force that game. Pretty strong. We managed to get through it. I would... Do we want to feed the swarms? We can bring in two over the Morphos. Um, I don't hate it, if I'm being honest. Maybe cut and entomb over one of the Morphos. Metamorphose. To leave one Morphose? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Uh, so this is our red land. You, 
we're mana short of burning wish into uh relay turn one if their opponent has no interaction whatsoever um you could also land right right grid have two mana open gamble for lion's eye diamond and then pray to no no that's not a good line hmm what would you do here would you take it or would you mulligan i would mull this hand really only speaks to like maybe a relay hand off of this gamble but it depends on what we draw we would be hoping to draw some more fast mana I mean, there's obviously some draws that make it a great hand, but I, we, I mean, we could like open up with just right of flame grid and pass as well. They're not playing discard anymore, right? They usually play a couple because One personal tutor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What then? It's three. Are on the draw. I do like that they're a fluster list. Like, they have at least one that we've seen, and Grid is pretty good against Fluster. And we only saw, what, two days? No, they had the full four. Oh, they had four. Okay, I couldn't really see it. It's not terrible. I think Right of Flame Grid is likely what we'd wind up doing. Do you think that your average six is better than this? That's the question, right? Probably. All right, then we're supposed to mulligan. Double relay, a little bit awkward. Uh, I think we bottom a relay and keep this. Just hope to rip an artifact. Yeah, Chrome Ox would be perfect, although... One, two, three, four, five, six. No, we would need another card for that. We have the bottom one. Um, Yeah, I guess so. I just hope they don't have discard, but... I mean, we, we could bottom the Shatter Skull and keep double relay. That's. And then if that's you draw uh, another petal, you could double relay. Yeah, like, I don't know how good this card is anyway. Yeah, without a Chrome Mox. And this allows us to chain relays too if the first one like is eh. Sure. All right, so they're passing. I'll Ooh. take it. Paddle. Hell yeah. Diamond. So, uh, there's another one of those situations where it might be good to ritual first, but... So if you do that, like if, you have to sack the pedal uh, if they daze you. So I'm yeah, just trying to play daze. around daze. I think this yeah. is just safer. And now you relay. Oh, wow. So we can Not even just... pay for a couple copies of Fluster here. Hmm. Um, I think we probably get Badlands. Yep. Because we have the extra Thought Seasons in the deck and the, uh, whatever they're called. Feed the Swarms, even though we're probably not going to need Feed the Swarm. They could Dark Ritual in the Ley Line. Tomb. Right of Flame. From Mox. Echo. And Wish. Really? That's pretty good. Yeah. So it's worth noting we don't have Thought Seasons in our board to get with the Burning Wish. That said... I think that's fine. Yeah. All right. Misty Rainforest, and they're passing. Interesting. That's a we land. Imprint with Chromox, most likely, but maybe not. Oh, uh, too late. <laughs> too late. We, might, we may have wanted to imprint the relay. Um, uh, although, honestly, we might just be relaying this turn anyways, right? I would tap Badlands, not Opal. Okay. Just to have blue if we need it. Although I don't think it's going to come up. So right of flame is two, four, five. We have eight total. I don't hate uh, just like hmm, casting Wish here to see we, if it gets forced. But... We, can, we can double relay. Like we could relay and then we could... Wish relay. Burning Wish, yeah. My only fear is losing the burning. game, but <laughs> I guess we can't beat that anyway. Because we can only beat one counter here. Or we can just entomb for Echo. Or like, do we want to like entomb and burn? 
Oh no, we can only do one. Do we want a burning wish for something and then just relay? Well, that's what I was thinking. Is like trying to get them to force the burning wish and then relaying. Mm. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, if they forced it. At the same time, okay. Yeah, I would. I would cast burning wish here. Put it on the stack. Really missing that thoughtsies right now, unfortunately. Hmm. So we could get Echo if it resolves and then relay. I think Echo is probably the best card we can get here. Yeah. You know, it's funny in some spots, empty would actually just be GG. Like 10 goblins. <laughs> All right. Force pitch days. I love it. Nice. All right. And now we relay again. Five cards. Five cards. We have six mana in play. We have, we have three, three in cards. hand. Wish, Petal, Morphos, Badlands. That was a really good. LED. That was a yeah. very good relay. Uh, keep in mind, this Wish yeah. here does not work well with Echo. Um, but that's fine. I just passed. Grid. Uh, we really want to hit a grid. So I think we should Morphos here trying to find a protection spell. Yep. Cast this, and we'll add red black. Draw. Boom! Yeah. Got him. Thought sees. Got him. We could pay for fluster. Ooh. Oh. So. Um. All right. So this is what I would do. I would take the doomsday. I think. Um. Just because they have double force, we're not going to be able to plow through that. And this way, if they draw land, they don't just, like, have it all. So it's either that, or we take a force, and then they are forced to force, and they're left with Doomsday land land. I think I like that better. I think we have better odds of, of going, going off. So we have so many outs. Like, a Tomb is good here, Gamble's good here, Echo's good here, Burning Wish. Okay. I'll trust your judgment. Uh, I'm feeling a little nervous about this, but let's sure. do it. So now we cast Wish. And what's nice about Wish is we don't have to go all in on Wish. Uh, with Wish, it, it just says you can cast these spells. You don't have to. And they pitch the days. So now it is Doomsday versus Shatter Skull Smashing. We need another mm -hmm. good top deck here. And I'm not going to play this out just because of we don't need to. We do have 11 mana in play. There's land three. <laughs> All right. So now we're putting a spot where we have to top deck to win. Yeah, we have a ton of ton of votes. There's Doomsday. So we have two in Tomb, three Gamble, three Burning Wish, two Echo. It's worth noting if we draw Echo of Aeons, it's just lethal. Um, it would actually deck our opponent. Perfect. It's pretty hard to make that win happen, but this would do it. So because of Consider, they do just have a win next turn with this, right? Consider I mean, they, into... they would have had a win anyway, uh, even before Consider. Even before that card? Yeah. Uh, so the pile that I'd probably make is just ideas amount into triple uh, like gas spell. You don't actually need consider. Oh, right, right. Um, yeah, you don't have to open yourself up to graveyard hate. Not that we would have draw. it, but... Defense grid. Mm. All right, we just yeah, passed just... the turn. Well, there's no reason to play the grid. Sure. Like maybe they respect like Pyroblast or something now. I mean, they won't, but... That's a weird pile. Okay. So maybe they they stacked it with like double oracle. Yeah, they, they did a double oracle pile. And uh, we have nothing here, so we lose. Womp, yep. womp. And the draw? All right, we didn't have anything coming. 1-1, one, one, unfortunately. So it looks like your line would have been they would have probably countered the grid 
Yeah. How many would have echoed? Hmm. I just think that our deck would have played a little bit better because, like, you left them with action when you didn't have any, which is a pretty dangerous uh, line to take. Like, counting on them to get mana screwed. I don't know. Not the end of the world. Yeah. Match number three. We're on the draw. Tony Scaponi's still here. Tony, what do you think of this hand? Maybe a bit too slow, but it's not bad. Oh. Um, Red Flame, Gamble. We're on the draw. Correct. So this, in my opinion, you'd wait until turn two. And then on turn two, you could go right of Flame, Ritual, Entomb, Relay, Gamble, and then, you know, do some stuff. But is that good enough? Or should you just take a London Mulligan? Against a lot of decks, this is, is going to be fine. Against some, it's just not. But a lot of draws will make it very fast as well. I mean, I think it's worth keeping. Okay. Generally, when the sentence starts with, well, if we wait till turn two, then you just mulligan, right? <laughs> That's my first thought. Like, ah, but I want to win now. I'm a patient guy. I'm not all about the turn one life anymore, Tony. Yeah. Buy you into Nettle Sentinel. So I think we'll be okay waiting till turn two. Morphos? Most likely. So that opens Ooh. up a line where we can go right of flame morphos, make red black, ritual, and tomb relay. Yeah, there's that. We can uh echo if we want. You can go right of flame, morphos, make black and blue, ritual and tomb, and then echo. But I think your line would be better. I always love hearing that, Tony. I might actually clip that and play it back to me every once in a while. <laughs> All right. Weakening. Not a great draw here. All right. Let's Entomb. Go get that Echo. And then Relay for five. Uh, two Shatter Skull Smashings of Badlands, Dark Ritual, Relay. So that's actually kind of a stinky Relay for five, in my opinion. We don't actually, I think we don't want the Badlands, or maybe we do. If you play Volk, you have the guaranteed Echo. I guess you could just go like Dark Ritual, Volk, Flashback, and see what happens. Or you can gamble looking for a diamond. But then you lose mm -hmm. the Dark Ritual Echo line. I want it going for the turn two with Elves. Ooh, another Nettle Sentinel. Tony, we might be dead. We might have be dead because we decided that turn two is good enough. Fools! We need them to just draw running lands. So and many two, turn, turn three as well when we committed to the relay. No, this is our turn two. Oh, it was not a good right. draw. Um, I, I think what we do is we just Dark Ritual Echo. Uh, I think that the gamble for diamond line is a little bit risky for no reason. Um, yeah. All right, dark ritual. Spin that wheel. Ooh. Uh, we don't have a red source. Otherwise, nope. this would be lethal. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. We well, can, not that it doesn't matter, but we can we ritual can echo. tomb and yeah. big time echo. I'm just sad that we didn't open up a win. <laughs> All right, there's so always let's... there's always the next wheel. You live dangerously. All right, we we do have these shatter skulls, which is kind of funny. Like if we open up another all right of flame hand, we can at least wipe their board. <laughs> Uh, I think I'm going to leave one black floating. Ding dong. That's a win. Just Might in well case they have Force of Will. Just in case. You never know with these decks. 
All right, and then burning wish for chicken tendies. Boom. Yeah. Tony hates turn twos, but I love them. Yeah, this deck actually gets a fair amount of turn twos. Just because it'll... A lot of times we just wheel a bunch, and then we hit a relay for, like, 18 or something. So these defense grids I am less interested in. Elves list nowadays really aren't playing Mind Break that often. They're more of a Thoughtseize deck. So we have these grids that can go out. That said, they do help for Mox Uh Cards I'd be interested in, maybe the Grape Shot. Like, that seems like a reasonable card to side in here. Uh, you could board in the Thoughtseize. I don't hate that because it disrupts them. I don't like the idea of bringing in the Relay. Uh, you could do Freed the Swarm. It disrupts them, but also if they are some weirdo running Ley Line, you know, it stops that. Um, I see a lot of Ley Line out of them and occasionally Deafening Silence. Okay. I have started to come off grid against them because I've seen the same thing, not nearly as much uh, Mind Break Trap. Occasionally you run into like Force of Vigor or Endurance, but I think it's fine. Uh, I would probably just bring in all three Feed the Swarm. Really? I okay. Yeah, uh, just because at the end of the day, they're a combo deck, we're a combo deck. We just want to kill them before they kill us or cast Natural Order. For that reason, I never bring in Removal. I don't bring in Grape Shot. I don't bring in like Blast Zone for the previous iterations of the okay. Epic Gamble. But I expect Leyline of the Void, so... And here we have a Feed the Swarm. Hmm, this hand's so close. If you draw an artifact off the top, it's a turn one relay. I would it probably a, keep this. It's a turn one. Uh, or no, it isn't. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. All right, no ley line, which means that this Feed the Swarm can be tucked under Chromox if we want it to. Once upon a time. There's also um, Collector Roof is something you have to worry about. Yeah, that's so true. Feed the Swarm helps for that. I uh, am not a fan of that card. No. They should print as few Null Rods as possible, and they reveal Collector Oof off of the Once Upon a Time, <laughs> only because Tony mentioned it. I don't think that they would have said it before. Oh! Definitely silence into Oof. That's brutal. Uh, so we can Thought Seize away the Oof and then try to feed the Swarm the Silence. Yep. Let's get that oof. Oh, a second deafening <laughs> silence. Are you uh, kidding me? Um, wow. I can't believe that. What a hand. Excuse me. Yeah, a second deafening silence. All right, so I think we just have to feed the swarm. I don't think we, uh, there's like really another choice here. Yeah. Like you can burning wish, but like, what is it doing, right? Well, it's getting Gamble to get our other Feed the Swarm. That's what it's going to do. And there's Shepard. Okay. And they have Natural Order in hand? Yep. What a draw. Tony, I'm just going to say, I don't think you wanted this game as badly as our opponent did. <laughs> right. All right. We have no draws that win right here. Gamble, even for the Feed the Swarm is not fast enough. They have Natural Order for Huff. Tony, I'm going to save us the embarrassment of getting crushed here. I'm going to concede. Mm. But hey, I have a bonus for you. Did you know if you lose game number two after winning game number one, you get to be in the play for game number three, Tony? Did you know that? Uh, I didn't, actually. Oh, oh that's crazy. Thank you. Well, uh, Tony, you are playing a turn one deck, so that's a fun tidbit for you. So I'm looking Noted. to turn one. Uh, I don't know how you feel about that, but I just want a peanut butter and jam. Oh, yeah. So if that's the plan, hear me out. You could maybe board into more combo pieces. I'm just going to slide these here. I'm not saying we're doing this plan, but you could board in, you know, these cards that allow you to get ahead a little bit more for a turn one combo, I understand that these are mostly wish targets, but if you're just looking to mulligan into a turn one, maybe these are better than something like Feed the Swarm. I'm just talking out loud. Yeah, I think they're just super clunky, though, the, the odds of them. Plus, we can't turn one if a ley line is in play, and I still... I mean, we've seen Deafening Silence, but 
I still wouldn't count it out as a card. Okay. On the play. Um, this hand is not good enough. We have to ship that. Yep. This is the same hand that said you can go. Um. Oh, that you can imprint and tomb and tomb, put echo to the graveyard, lotus petal, bright of flame, gamble for LED, and then that gives you a fifty-fifty. Or you can just gamble for lion's eye diamond, and that gives you um sixty-six percent chance. Oh no, we have the bottom one. Ooh. So it'd be a 50 uh, 50 with not casting the right. Hmm. They mulliganed. I think I'm fine with going to five here. There's Echo. We have no way of getting it to the graveyard. I think we have to go to four. Yep. We're just looking for LED Echo here. This. Uh, so um, we have. It's possible. Gamble. Gamble and Echo. Yeah, I'd keep this. So, is there a card that you're more inclined to keep as a random fourth card? Because we have uh, to so bottom. Shatter, put Shatter Skull down. These are pretty interchangeable to me. I think I'd rather have Bright. Well, the question is, are we casting it? No, like, you just can't afford to. But if something were right. to go wrong, what card would you rather have in your hand? Uh, right of flame. Or I'd rather have it in my graveyard too, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're just going to cast Gamble. We have a 66% success rate here. All right, Lions at Island. Hey. Hello. All right, spin that wheel. We've made our land drop. Yikes. All right, so in order to play around Deafening Silence here, I'm going to play out uh, some of these artifacts. You don't actually need to play all the diamonds. And then imprint the Dark Ritual, so that way we can just kill Deafening Silence to start off next turn. And uh, we're begging, Tony, begging to draw Burning Wish. Mm. That's for sure. Or at least the Gamble, Entomb, Echo. That is not a land that casts Deafening Silence. I just want to throw that out there. It is Thought not. Sees. All right, well, that doesn't matter a whole lot right here, as long as we hit an action spell. I'd love to see Jokes, huh? Gamble, Echo, and Tomb, Burning Wish. Even Wish would do if they leave us with the Rite of Flame. That's a decent Jokes on you, OP. We got nothing. All right, they left us wishes and out. Huh. Mm. Um, all right, we have to pass. All right, metal fish with the thought sees. What is their turn to? I'm okay with wirewood symbiote. So we get another turn here to hit. But Tony, I don't want to jinx it. If we don't hit here next turn, they have three mana. Three mana means green sun for collector roof. So we should probably try to hit here. Right now. Ugh, that's brutal. All right, we have to pass. All right. Five cards for the opponent. Getting in there for three, we fall to 17. Four mana. This looks like a green sun. Yep. Mm -hmm. So now we just need to draw Burning Wish to stay in this game. That's about it. Shatter Skull. Shatter Skull wouldn't be bad. Oh, I could you be my draw last turn. <laughs> right. Um, so I think we just Grape Shot here. Wipe the board. Or, well, well, we can't wipe the board, but... We can target the Sentinel and force them to recast it next turn. So we have four here. We'll do one at the symbiote. Oh no, we uh we can't target the nettle sentinel. I'm, I'm sorry. That would right. require five. And we'll do one at the opponent, bring them to an even sixteen. Alright, so we're back in the spot where we need a top deck to win. At least the oof is off the table. Eight collector oof. 
Mm. You know, do you know how many days Collector Roof has ruined for me? Too many. Very many. All right. What do you hate more, Oof or Karn? Karn by far. Karn's a garbage card for garbage people. Yeah, I agree. Um, so one swift teeth means that they can get Dryad Arbor, and if they do that, Cradle taps for two, which means that they can natural order for Huff or Archon of Valor. Reach. Both are pretty good. So they're not getting Huff if they do have the natural order. Ooze. That's fine. Yeah. I just really, really hate Karn Tony. Yeah, me too. <sighs> Come on. Meyer. That's the turn. They're going to exile some of our stuff. They're going after their own to make their ooze larger. That makes sense. Trying to increase their clock. So now they have seven power. Uh, they're pretty close to killing us here next turn. And that represents lethal next turn. So we're going to want to fetch just to thin. And uh, that should do it. Here comes the big huff. Ah, oh, that's a bummer. That's the match. And uh, I don't know if I remembered to update a record last round. I did. Okay, Tony. I'm sorry, but we're one and two now. Not where Yikes. we wanted to be. Not no. where we wanted to be. All right, Tony. Things so far have not gone, gone according to plan. We're on the play here. And uh, this one's pretty close. So we have Chrome Mox that, it in, uh, that can imprint Shatter Skull Smashing. And then you can play out these artifacts. That's three mana, four mana, five mana. We're a mana short of turn one hardcast echo. But what we could do is just play this into play tapped, turn two, play volcanic, imprint something, turn two, hardcast echo. Do you like that or would you rather just mull again? I'd rather just mull. All right. You heard it from the master. We are mulliganing. This sounds pretty good. Yep. All right, so I know what I would do, but Tony, so we have the choice of bottoming Chrome Mox or bottoming Wish. And so it's interesting because Chrome Mox not only gives you an extra storm, it means that you get to keep your Lotus Petal when you relay, where keeping Wish means that you have guaranteed action next turn. Which would you do? I think I would actually bottom Badlands and just imprint the Wish. Okay, that's interesting. Four, five... As long as we hit some action and what, we're flipping five cards. Yeah, I think I like that more because I, I don't think we're really going to be able to utilize this wish anyways, unless we run into like a boatload of mana, which I, we might. All right, let's I'd do it. Rather do that. All right, opponent also went to the six cards. Tony, you've played enough combo at this point where I imagine you're also used to people just snap mulling to force a will against you. Oh, yeah. Yep. I've considered uh, making an alt, and then on that alt, um, like only playing my deck but tracking the data to see. So I'm going to play out Diamond before I play the Opal. And then tracking data to see how high my win percentage would be if my opponents didn't know who I was. <laughs> Feels like cheating. Shouldn't be allowed. Alright, and relay for five. We still have Metalcraft. Beautiful. Uh, gamble and Tomb. Okay, so we can double Echo next turn. Yep. Volcanic Island. Mm. Draw? Grid? Grid. Ah, uh, all right. So let's write a flame. And here it's like something sort of interesting, at least to me. Uh, we don't have to cast both of these. We can wait to see if our echo resolves before we can cast the other one. But if you're going to keep one in exile, is it better to keep gamble or in tomb? Mm, they both have pros and cons. If we're missing. A burning wish for the kill. Gamble can be more useful. Uh, but they can both. Uh, damn. It's a good question. 
I would probably rather have Entomb. It's more uh, direct surgical. So you'd rather have so this? Ra you'd rather cast uh, Yeah, gamble I'd now. rather gamble, yeah. Okay. If we had fewer echoes in our deck, I'd probably go the other way. So it doesn't really matter here because we're going to double echo anyway. So let's sack the diamond. And then yeah. echo. And it resolves. Wow. All right. So it's turn two, which means we can lightning bolt ourselves right now. How do you feel about just putting Burning Wish on the stack? Because if it resolves, we can just kill our opponent. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Do you like the whole winning the game thing, Tony? Is that something you're into? Yeah, I mean, if if that's what you're into. All right, so we have Storm 6. This would be 7, 8, 9 for Tendrils. We do have to cast one more spell. Um, we can just cast this in Tomb. Yeah. All right, so now we can play this and bolt ourselves. Oh, have we... we I guess we've played a land. I didn't realize that. Oh, uh, yeah, because we didn't play a land the, the first. So, two, four. We still five, have enough. Six. Yep. All right. We can imprint one of these. We have four black mana, so that's not a bottleneck either. Okay. Let's uh, put this on the stack. So, it's worth noting that it'd actually be a pain in the buns if like we got dazed here because they would buy them another turn. That said, we'll take, you know, 30 life. No, we have... Oh, we can uh, why did I think that we... I don't know what I was you thinking. Gotta make, you gotta make another black. Or undo. Yeah, let's undo. Um, there we go. For some reason, I thought we... I forgot about the blue floating. I, I just, you know, tunnel visioned. But if they had force of negation or force of will, they could theoretically buy some time. But Tendril's got the job done. Um, it's worth noting in this league so far granted Tony very small sample size there hasn't been a game yet where grape shot would have actually have been um, better than tendrils it's just tendrils is so easy right we did kill a collector of... oh that's true that is true it just uh, has so much there's so much application with the card very wide application for grape shot yeah like i'm never getting rid of it either just because of the whole veil of summer thing but i'm just noticing yep. how often now that we're tendrils thing is all uh oh yeah so against the volcanic island probably just like blue red you know delver shell do you board at all like is it the empty for amorphos again uh yeah is that do we know that's what it is? What did we see again? Volcanic Island. We said we saw volcanic, and that's it. So I don't think I would bring in empty here, just because I don't. We don't know that's what they're on. Okay, I think it's a pretty safe assumption, but I'm fine with not boarding. I think it would be more safe in a, you know, like challenge or bigger tournament, but leagues, all over the place. I played against, <laughs> they they had Prismatic Vista, and they cast Wishclaw Talisman on turn two with, off of two basics. That sounds like good, just good, healthy, clean living to me. We have to mulligan that seven. Here's a six, but this six is kind of sketchy. I think we should go to five. This is... So we'd be, what, imprinting Thoughtseize, Ritual... Rate of flame. It's a relay if wish resolves, which is pretty so, unlikely. We're on the draw, though. Yeah, that is true. So we could just, just bottom the opal. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's fine to keep. Okay. My fear is that even if all this were to go well, you need our opponent not to have any copies of a force effect or days. Draw. Okay. We can play it more, like, we can imprint this in Tomb and Thoughtseize. Do we want to bolt ourselves? I think we do. Yeah. Love to bolt. Okay. And they forced it. Four cards left in hand. Like that. 
So we still don't quite know what they're on, but... Uh, Alright, so they're on the uh, Blue Red Saga build. Zoomer Delver. <laughs> Dash Monkey. Echo, we wanted that! Uh, uh, so if we play Burning Wish and it resolves, we can get Pier and resolve Pier next turn. But we have to... Or we can empty oh, for we 10. Just cast it? Uh, we yeah, can... I think I like emptying, but they forced forced the Thoughtseize. Yeah. Alright, we're going for it. Okay. So you could cast Burning Wish before this ritual. Uh, the problem with that is if you get empty, they know what the jig is, and here they might right. like make a misplay and then not force. Alright. Uh -huh. So let's empty... And hope that 10 is good enough. So our opponent does have two constructs they can possibly make with this saga. Um, and then they have a Ragavan as another blocker. But this is going to stall the game out and just buy us a little bit more time. Now Saga goes up to two. Baracus. All right. So we're... It's interesting that they didn't play Ragavan there. Uh, and I like the Shatter Skull Smashing draw. We're just going to crash. Ugh. So they're going to block one, take nine, go to nine. And pass. Now they can make another construct. Oh, that's why they didn't. Never mind, I'm a dummy. So if they played Ragavan last turn, their construct would have died. Which makes a lot of sense why they didn't play the Ragavan. And tomb. That doesn't do anything with this cage in play. We just need a crash. They'll fall to two life, and then we just need them to not deal us 15 on their turn. Which I think is a fair uh, ask. All right, so they're taking seven to two life. It may have been worth just playing the Shatter Skull there. Okay. I don't think it really matters, but. All right, can they get rid of three more blockers? So Ragavan counts as one. For what it's worth, if you drew Bright of Flame, Shatter Skull becomes a pretty valuable card because it clears a blocker. Um, oh, because we have one in the yard. Yeah. Three, four. Does it, though? One, two, three, four. It only hits for two. Well, they still have the Ragavan in their hand. Oh, right. They're going to play that out. Well, likely. So they were not on Blue Red, by the way. They're actually on Jeskai, and we saw that with the ending. And it looks like we're going to get it here. Because all we have to do is attack. Can he do it? Ooh. Nice. So I'd like to point out, both matches we won, we won by attacking with goblins. Maybe mm -hmm. your deck needs to just be black-red goblins. <laughs> All right, Tony, match number five coming up in just a second. Okay. Tony, are you the better in Tomb deck? That's what I want to know right now. We're facing Eric Landon, who usually plays black-red reanimator. Do you think you're the better in Tomb deck, especially on the draw? Yes, 100%. All right. <laughs> Tony says that he's especially the better in the Tomb draw. deck. <laughs> All right. So what's Eric going to do? They kept seven, so we're probably just dead. Probably. We do have to worry about silence. Grief. So they pitched the anime dead, so... If they have reanimate, they can double grief us. Which we usually beat those hands. That's oftentimes how I win this match, even when losing the die roll. They keep these double grief hands, and then we just kill them in five turns. Or three turns. Gamble. I don't even think gamble's the right pick here. Okay. Oh, I'm probably just going to take Gamble and Entomb, right? Yeah, well, that's a fine play. All right, so Relay would be a good draw here. Um, So I think what we should do is play these out and just Morphos. Or is that crazy? I think that's... I wouldn't. Okay. Right? They don't... Because they don't have a body in the, in the yard. Like, we're just getting Delvered. We're at 20. They only have two cards in hand. I would wait. 
Okay. For at least a draw, possibly two. So land two. So they have two cards in hand. Looks like looting. looting. That's pretty dangerous. Looting in a land. So next okay. turn they can flashback looting. Draw. Yeah. Great is a terrible card. Uh yeah. repassing again. I feel like you were pretty safe at this point. So the the fear is I'm just talking this through. So let's say we pass they flashback looting discard crystal brand. If we try to relay next turn, they're gonna get a full turn with the crystal brand unchecked. Um where if we morphos now, either of these spells off the top are hits and relays a hit. Yeah, I guess we're holding cards because of relay, so what you just said makes a lot of sense. Okay. I'm not sure we have to go all in with pedal, though. Too late. <laughs> like, technically, we needed to play one just to turn right. on Metalcraft. All right, so let's cast this Morphos. We'll add black red. Try not to misclick here. Ooh. So uh, that gets gamble, and the next turn we can yeah. gamble. Problematic that we have this grid in hand, though. Well, this is going to be the one time that I want to entomb, and then we'll do it. So. <laughs> Another looting from hand this time. That's trouble. Exhume dark red. Getting a little bit lucky here. That's what you get for keeping that grief hand. All right. So the question is, do we play it safe now? Just next turn. All right. They have no hand. So I think we might want to consider just. Ah, oh, come on, relay. <sighs> I was going a to say. Terrible draw. Do we just play the grid because our opponent passed doing nothing? I think I would. Yeah, and they have they put themselves to zero cards. I don't know why. Why he played the pedal. So this turn, the worst possible thing that could happen is they flashback looting, hit Gristlebrand, discard Gristlebrand into reanimate. Uh, yeah. Ah. Uh, punished. All right, so let's draw an into. Yeah. Another burning wish. Uh, do we just get echo here? I think I like that. Um, sure. Which means Dark Ritual off the top means we can hard cast it. Also, Lion's Eye Diamond is live. All right, so now they can flashback looting just to mill, and they're choosing not to. This means we're one mana short. I think I'm okay with right relay. Yes. Relay for two. Hell yeah. Let's see what we revealed. Land land. We can kill their grief. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, those were two bad reveals. Does this deck have something against finding lines? I diamond Tony. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I, I think it's I think it's you. You got to brush up on your relay. It's that follow through. I'm telling you. And Doom. Um, All right. The red five. Yeah, I mean, I guess we just put an uh, echo to the graveyard. We do. The question is, do we go for it now? Or do we? I don't think we wait a turn, right? They have one card in hand. They still don't have a fatty in their yard, though. I think we go for it, personally. We have a land drop. They don't have access to white. I don't think he's playing main deck. Uh, yeah. All right, come on, Echo. Be good to me. We have a land drop over here. Yep, this looks pretty good. Okay, they're at 15, so this means that we're only a mana off from being able to win. I believe. Uh, so let's... Morphos... Red, black. Actually, red, red. Red, yeah. Red was a terrible uh, find. Oh, no, he's supposed to make blue so we can oh, echo. That's true. But um, it's okay. We can... 
We can tune for Echo and gamble for LED. We can gamble for LED and then they die if it doesn't hit Wish. Burning Wish. I like that. Yeah, I definitely but messed up hit, on the Morphos. But it can't, it can't hit LED either, though. So that's a 50-50. Although, if it hits Burning Wish, then we can just entomb for Echo. So yeah, I like gambling for LED here. It, okay, I was going to say, it just has to not hit itself. You just have to not cast entomb. <laughs> as gamble okay do we want to float blue here or do we want to float red black uh red black i'm just Let's... asking because we have the lands over here right that's a fair point yeah yeah then float blue and i guess it doesn't matter which one right okay looks like a win at the very least no we're echoing at least so how much mana do we have total? Three, four, five, six. So we just gamble for so, diamond here. I guess we don't wait, need to wait, gamble wait. for diamond. Wait. If we gamble for burning wish and hit, we have three, four, five mana, right? So we don't need any more mana from hand. If we hit, we can grape shot them, right? 13. Well, 14, 15. Yeah, that's actually true. So and this... if it hits the Burning Wish, we can still echo. Is it worth? I, I think it is. It's a 80% chance to win on the spot, right? All right. Hey. Got him. Must be the money. All right. Imprint this gamble. Pedal. The gamble master figuring out the odds. And then grape shots. And my favorite part about this, Tony, we can also kill the grief. We can. Although I don't think Eric's going to let us get that far. We did have the mana to get him with the, the tendies. Yeah, but then we don't get to kill the grief. Right. Which is important. And we got to kill the grief. I to note it. Oh, you let us. <laughs> All right, I'll take it. So we got game one on the draw against Reanimator. So you mentioned Silence, and that is yes. a card that I've seen Eric play. I believe that the more recent lists have cut it, but this grid does protect us against it. So I'm not against keeping it. Uh, I am interested in this Thoughtseize to slow them down. I, like, we could board out maybe one grid. Or you can board out a Morphos. I'd probably do one grid personally. Oh shoot, sorry. I just muted for a second and then forgot I muted. Uh has so has he still been playing silence? I've seen I've seen more of it, but that's probably just the lag factor of people seeing his older list and actually playing it and me I, seeing it. I haven't noticed it recently. Um we can do a quick goldfish search. Okay. Reanimator. Or silence in the last list. Alright, so how do you want to go about this? We could also board out a Morphos. Or even like the Agademes. Um What are you trying to bring in? Oh, Thought Seas 3. I think that's a card we want. Oh right, right, right. Yeah, I mean I think it's your choice of either like an opal or a metamorphos. I wouldn't get rid of the grids. I've I've lost way too many games to damn okay. silence. I've done a lot of silencing in my life, so I know what it's like to be on the other side. It feels so mm -hmm. good to silence somebody out of the game. A guilty pleasure for sure. Back in my day, the storm mirrors were defined by one mana white spells. Can't play Dorm's chant. The Epic Storm play Dorm's chant. Three times. A good card. I was very excited when uh, Silence was spoiled because it got around Leyline of Sanctity, which was everywhere. And this mm -hmm. hand, uh, I'm not in love with it, I'll be honest. 
This seems a little fragile. Yeah, it's pretty bad. What we're looking for is multiple LEDs and echo, but we take LED echo. This plays through Chancellor. Opponent going to five. One thing that I like about this hand too is it secretly does okay against silence because if they're just holding open silence, you just go opal LED echo and that they can silence in response to echo, but they can't just sit on a silence waiting to blow you out. Mm. Main phase and tomb. So they probably have a reanimate here. Aona, pretty good against us. Um, maybe we should have boarded them to feed the swarm because we can't beat Iona on red. Yeah. And we're dead. Okay. Okay. It's definitely a card that I've, because I've, I've cast the card against Reanimator, but I think that's when I was taking Grid out, not assuming that they were on Silence. I mean, it's pretty free to keep, like, one of these in, right? Like, it doesn't hurt us. And I really think that on the play, we can get away with uh, one less Grid. Because we okay. also boarded in Thoughtseize. Like, I think that this is very reasonable. Sure. Okay. So Chancellor is their best card at the moment. Mm. Is this keepable? I think it is. I'm down for this, Tony. Are you? Dodges discard. We might be able to buy enough time with Thoughtseize. Again, the problem is is silence. Because you'll we'll Thoughtseize and we're gonna see threatening cards and silence, and then we'll be forced to take the silence and then or the other way around. I well, like you can just beat silence by just like entombing for echo and forcing them to respond right yes and no like they it gives them a turn you know we can mulligan like i yeah i would i would mulligan. so gamble gets led here uh get uh yeah okay gamble no chance or trigger Good with that. Got him. Perfect. Okay, and Echo. This is stinky. Um, maybe we just have to. Oh, no, we could gamble for another diamond. We can. Should we? Probably. I think we should. Yeah. yeah. At least to play it out. Like, we could just pass now, and then next turn, Ritual Grid. Or we can just spin. Um, something to consider is if we just spin, we also only have one echo left in the deck for the following turns. Um, let's spin. Okay. Tony says to spin, we spin. Let's spin. This uh, is pretty good. So this is a relay for a metric buttload uh we can also put that last echo to the graveyard wish isn't quite good enough here um i think i'm okay with putting the echo to the graveyard just for the extra reveal how do you feel uh are they gonna have any sort of graveyard did they play coffin purge would they bring it in i mean it's only one of anyways yeah into... I think the real question is, do we value the mana higher than the Echo being in the graveyard? Because we could accidentally exile it to the relay. Right. Yeah, we're probably going to hit multiple LEDs. I wouldn't... Uh, yeah, you know what, just do it. Because we get another relay trigger as well. Alright, so 13 cards turn one off relay. We do have an Echo on the board. Okay. The problem here, of course, is... We actually didn't hit uh, that much mana off that. You ready for it? Uh, don't say it. They don't have it. They don't have it, Tony. No! I would entomb. We... I would ritual double entomb. Just to thin our deck of stuff that we're not going to want. 
That was backbreaking. Um, uh, put right of flames in the bin. We don't have any; they're all exiled. Oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> from Mox. <laughs> well, what do we don't want? Yeah. Oh, uh, that sucked. But we do get to play a land. They can't stop us from doing that. That that hurt. Ugh. Yeah. So we can play Meyer and get Volk. And then next turn we can flash back Echo. Uh yeah. Um uh, so how many wishes do we have left? One, two. Alright, we still have two burning wish and then this wish itself. That was brutal. It was, although they only have four cards, nothing in their graveyard. Okay. They Bro. might have another silence. That was pretty good. Dark Ritual. That resolved. Oh, they're F6. Problem is, we, you know, without a grid in play, we're wheeling them into potential silence. And this Entomb doesn't get... Nice. Um... No, this this is good. All of our, oh no, it doesn't. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we need... just lead on Thoughtseize here, so we don't get silenced. Yeah. If they have one, they might even feel pressure to cast it. And their hand looks pretty stacked. Double Untomb. Oh. So we take the reanimate. Reanimate. Yeah. And then lay out defense grid. Yep. We don't. Uh, actually, we do have to imprint. So we can imprint the Entomb because it doesn't do anything anymore. Yep. Do we keep these for Storm Count in case we draw another Relay? Probably. Yeah, I'd say so. They do have an Unmasked, but they're going to take the Dark Ritual anyway. Mm. And they didn't Entomb. Uh, I don't know if that means a whole lot, but... Main phase and tomb. So they drew a re uh a reanimate. Oh now they're going for looting. That's an interesting line. If only we had a looting to entomb for Tony. If only. Or an ignite the future. Okay. Gristle Brand is in the graveyard. Alright, so will they draw seven? They do. We know that they still Ooh. have an unmask. Uh, a burning they... wish off the top would mean lethal grape shot. Yeah. They would have to discard us multiple times. Burning wish, there's only two of them left, so the odds are not in our favor. Dark ritual and tomb again. They can unfortunately put Iona into play. Yeah, there it is. The Iona and enemy dead. So, oh, we have, I was going to say our only out is drawing Echo, but we have no more in the deck. And Tomb. Right. Not looking good. We're at one. Uh, we're just still mocked, because even the Feed the Swarm can't kill Iona anymore. Yep. GG's. I'd like to see what our next draw is, though. Why is there so much reanimator out there right now? Eric's back. People think that being a trophy leader means that uh, you, the deck is good. Mm. I think that's uh, nothing against Eric or Black Red Reanimator. I really have no problems with either. But uh, people tend to believe that being on top of the trophy board means something is good. When in reality, I think it says more about the amount of time that person plays magic. Uh, just because, like, it's just a volume game. Like, if you're playing lots of uh, leagues, you're going to 5-0. Um, and if you're a better player, you can 5-0 with a bunch of different decks. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so right. Wish here could have been an out, but the Iona shutting us off. Nothing against Eric or Black Red Reanimator or anyone that grinds trophies. I have no problems with you. It's just, it really is a volume game. And sorry that I have my modern deck up here. I was talking about it with Tony. Um, let's go back to the Epic Gamble. So, Tony, this is the deck. 
I still would like to see a Faithless looting. There was three times in that league that I can think of where I was like, okay, only if we had Faithless looting to get with an Entomb. I think being a... It's a pretty low cost over a Metamorphose, in my opinion. Um, other than that, I thought the deck ran pretty well. I was impressed by the speed. I really was. Uh, but I would like to see that small change. Empty was sweet. I love Relay, you know that. Mm. That's my thoughts. I think this list is pretty close to optimized. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think we got robbed a couple times. We certainly rolled low on like most of our relays, um, but it was definitely a blast, right? It was. I also like that you used the term "rolled low" as if this was a gamble. <laughs> All right, Tony. Thank you for doing this. I really do appreciate you. And everyone, definitely go subscribe to Tony's channel, Tony Scaponi. Tony uploads tons of great combo content just like this channel. So if you're following me, you should definitely be following Tony. Tony, do you have any last words, plugs, shoutouts, whatever you would like to say? Uh, yeah, not only YouTube, but on Twitch. Basically, anywhere you want to find me, it's Tony Scaponi, one word. Um, but yeah, that's it for, for plugs. Shoutouts to you guys and the Epic Storm team for just being a tremendous resource. Uh, you know, if you want to get more connected with that community and Storm in general, I would uh, recommend getting on Discord and uh, talking with the guys. There's so many people in that community that are just bouncing ideas back and forth on, on the regular. So, And the Epic Storm and that community in particular is a huge part of that. So shout out to you guys. The Discord also has a pretty popping Epic Gamble community. There is a uh, a thread in there for the Epic Gamble. And through the data, Tony, you might not believe me, but it is one of the more popular channels in there. Hey. All right. Uh, I think that's all I have to say other than like, comment, subscribe, all that shilling stuff. Tony, thanks again. I really do appreciate you. And uh, everyone, keep storming. Hey, Brand Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.